Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first. If you're a follower of Christ, it's time for you to put your cross on first, and it's actually time for you to accept your calling, accept who you are. One thing about it before I even go further, who God called, he called. That means he's going to talk to you personally. And you're going to understand what I'm getting at in a few minutes. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for giving me another chance to spread your word, to understand your word, to utilize your word, to bring forth fruit into your kingdom. Lord Jesus, I ask you to use me as you seem fit this morning, to bring forth whatever it is you want me to bring forth, to go wherever it is you want me to go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, I'm going to talk about anointing and calling by God. And I'm going to go a little further. Touch not my anointed. This is going to be a series. I'm going to do it over the next few days. I have a long God wants me to talk about it. But I just want to prove a few points here. First of all, I'm going to, start, I'm going to go back to Genesis. One of the first people to be called by the Lord. And guess who that was? Noah. Genesis chapter 6, chapter 1. I'm going to read a few things today. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of which all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. First of all, you're going to see something early that God intended for us to live a long time, but he said, Hey, a hundred and twenty years old. That's what your goal is. I just want to let you know that. God wanted us to live to be over a hundred years old. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also, after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, worship of old, men of renown. We know giants existed in the Bible, David and Goliath. But I can go even deeper than that, but I'm not going to go down today. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And they repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man, the beast, and creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me not that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in the generation that Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh and had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, hmm, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. So, as you can see, God chose Noah, perfect man in the earth. And you got to think about it, what he chose. He finna execute vengeance on his people. But he's going to spare righteous Noah. Because Noah was a good man, a perfect man. You can just say he was a man after God's heart. God's heart and God talked to him. You see, when you're called by God, God talks to you. You don't have to really realize that somebody else got to tell you your purpose. God's going to tell you your purpose straight up. And I'm going to go into this in very great detail. But let me go further. You see, he called him. If he called Noah, then he anointed Noah, right? And he said, touch not my chosen. Now watch this. I'm going to go over to Genesis chapter 9. Watch this. He called Noah. He called Noah. Just remember that. Noah chapter 9. Verse, I mean, Genesis chapter 9, verse 20. I'm going to start reading that. The shame of Noah. The, and Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and was drunken. And he was uh, uncovered with his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren. You got some key elements here. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his brother and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Jephthah took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah woke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. 
And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem and Canaan, shall be his servant. God said, The Lord Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years. And all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. Are y'all ready for this? Are y'all ready for this? I got a lot of things to break down today. A lot of things to show you. That God just set on my mind already. You know, first of all, you got to understand, when God calls anybody to his kingdom to do his work, it's different for everybody. For Noah, it was to build an ark because the world was getting so evil and the men of the world were evil and doing evil in the sight of the Lord. You know, don't tell him what was going on then because God was majorly upset. He was about to wipe us all out. But you know, he, it's, it's, you're going to see a pattern in the Bible. You see, it's always one man among many to save a bunch. You see, that's the foreshadowing of events. Jesus came to die for many people's sins. You know what I'm saying? Who God called, he ordained. Jesus is a good example. Noah is a perfect example of being ordained by God. And he talked to him on a personal level. He didn't send a messenger to him. He came straight to Noah and told him straight up, Hey, I want you to do this for me. But you got to think about it. And started to hear your anointing. You got to realize, you got to hear God's voice. So you got to understand one thing. Noah heard God's voice and he accepted God's voice. Well, he believed. He had to believe. You understand? This is before any books were written. You know what I'm saying? Noah trusted that voice in his head. He listened to it. And he did exactly what God asked him to do. You understand? And you got to think about it. You know, vengeance belongs to the Lord. Think about this. First of all, you got to understand one thing. He saved Noah in order to execute vengeance on the rest of the world for what they were doing wrong. You understand? He saved Noah to execute vengeance on the world. You know, who the Lord called here, dang, you got a purpose. You see, Noah didn't bring nobody else into them, into the ark with him, except who God told him to bring into the ark with him, his children. Do you understand? His wife and his son's wives. That's it. He didn't bring nobody else in. You see, you got to think about it. You think that was easy, an easy task for a man to build an ark and to house all the animals. I'm sure People were trying to get in, and Moses wouldn't let them in. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. God calls you according to a purpose, and you got to realize that purpose. He's telling you, hey, nobody else can't go in here but you. Guess what? Only you can go in there. You and your family and these animals. You understand? Because I love them just like I love my children, and I'm going to repopulate the earth through you. So you got to understand, we're first two lessons. When God calls you to do something, you got to do it, and you got to be obedient to the team. You understand? Obedient to the team. But you're going to also see why we all sin and fall short of glory of God. All right. After Noah built the tent, after after he built the ark and years didn't pass. I mean, after he got out there, he started. I mean, the land was ceased from flooding. He got out the ark. He started building him a vineyard. And he started loving, and loving wine. And he got drunk with wine one night. And he was so drunk that he passed out naked. And one of his sons saw him. One of his sons saw him and went and told the other sons. But the other sons, being a little smarter, they said, you know what, let's... Now, you finna realize one thing first. First of all, what's one of the commandments? Honor thy father and thy mother so thy days will be long upon this earth. You finna see scripture being enacted right before your eyes, before the commandments were even there. You understand? So, anyway, they covered, they walked backwards and covered their father's nakedness. And then when Noah woke up, he knew what had happened. He knew his son went in there running, telling his mouth about some things. You understand? And Moses, I mean, uh, and Noah cursed his son. You'll be a servant to your brothers all the days of your life. And he blessed the other two in the name of God. He said, I will bless those that bless you. He told Abraham, I will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. What's one of the commandments? Honor your father and your mother. God said it's best to reveal the matter. I mean, to conceal the matter, to reveal the matter. You're going to see a lot of things happen in this matter of moments. First of all, through God, through Moses, 
I mean, through Moses, God executed vengeance on her, on uh, his son, the first son that saw. First of all, the first son disrespected his father. He could have covered him up, but no, he want to run tell that. And he inherited a curse behind that. Under your mother and your father. Touch not my anointed. Moses was anointed by God. You understand? Yeah, he was drunk. But he still did God's purpose. Why well, you learn a lot of things. You know, you learn that God's people have flaws. You understand? Could you imagine building an ark? Just you and your sons? And being on the sea for so many days and nights and coming back and, and wanting to drink and have a good time? Ain't no better than way for a man to enjoy himself for all the trials and the, all the toys that God put a place upon his head than for him to eat, drink, and be merry. Yes, the Bible says, be not drunk with mine, but God, I'm sure God understands. After all that Noah been through, that all that Noah had to do for the Lord, he was anointed by the Lord, and yeah, he got drunk one time. You understand? Who am I to judge? First of all, you didn't build an ark, and I didn't build an ark. I'm sure it was hard, and I'm sure he wanted to rest and relax through his days. His son just took advantage of that situation and made fun of his father and showed his other brothers. And guess what? He inherited the curse behind it, and the curse came through whose mouth? Noah's. Vengeance belonged to the Lord. Sometimes the Lord uses people to execute vengeance. That's why he says, spare the rod, spoil the child. That's scripture. So as a follower of Christ, you're supposed to discipline your kids. Sometimes vengeance comes through your hands. But it comes through the Lord. If God tells you to discipline your kids, chastise your kids, you got to do it. You understand? You understand? I'm sure he still loved them. But at the same time, hey, you just don't know who you messing with. You understand? You see, I just wanted to touch base on Noah this morning. I actually read about Abraham too. But Noah's story is a little deeper than that. It covers a lot of things. It covers how God destroys evil in the world. You got to think about it. Yes, Jesus died for our sins, right? But you can die in that sin. And some people are going to die in their sins. I hate to say it, but it's the truth. Some people are going to die in their sins. Think about how many people died in their sins when God sent the flood upon the earth. Think of how many people died in their sin. My wife sent me a video the other day, yesterday. And it was a, a video. It was a girl riding around. She's saying she was drunken. She's saying she's part of it. She listens to a song on the radio. She's riding around, smoking up weed, smoking weed. And it's not about the weed, it's not about the drunkard, but just hear me out here. She's smoking weed, driving, she says she's drunk, she's weed in one hand, phone in the other hand, recording herself, going live, you know, and I was like, wow, this is crazy, you understand? And then you hear the song that's playing in the background, it's talking about Russian roulette, Russian roulette, you know what Russian roulette is? It's playing with death, cheating death. You understand? It's, it's a game involved when somebody has a bullet with one, a gun with one bullet in it and they pull the trigger and see what happens. So it's basically the song she's listening to saying is back like she's playing Russian roulette with her life. And all of a sudden, a crash. And then the video went black for a while and then I guess everybody snaps out the reality and see what's going on. It's black and the phone, whatever. You hear weeping and crying in the background. Come to find out the woman who was driving, she died. She died in her sin. You see, I'm going to tell y'all something, people. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. It's no way she had enough time to ask for forgiveness in a split second like that. You got to understand some things, people. You got to be careful out here in this world. You understand? I just want to throw that, that story out there. Same way so many people, when God flooded the earth, died in their sins. You understand? So many people died in their sins. But he chose Noah. He chose his anointed one to be saved. And guess what? He chose many anointed ones to be saved. Touch not my anointed. You understand? Touch not my anointed. You learn one lesson. 
Under your father and your mother, you learn this through Noah. Under your father and your mother, so your days will be long on this earth. Actually, so you will be blessed. It's a blessing to honor your mother and your father. And God talks about a tail bearer too. You understand? Yes, his father was drunk. You understand? With wine. He could have covered them just like the other ones do. The old, the New Testament talks about walk not on your children's nakedness. You know, it talks about that in Exodus after Moses come, when he, after he laid down the commandments and things of such. God's laws has been in place since the beginning. In their hearts. It was in Noah's heart. Why do you think Noah was so enraged? Because God's words was in him. He said, I will place my words in their hearts. God is with everybody. All that's up to you is to hear them and step into your chosenness. But the thing is, God knows who's chosen. God knows who's going to accept him. God knows who's going to step into their purpose. And once you step into your purpose, what can man do to you? After that happened, Noah still lived 300 and something day, years in his life. So that little sinful nature, that little sinful act that Noah committed, it then stopped him from inheriting the kingdom of, of God. I'm sure. I'm sure. It never said Noah turned away from God or anything like that. You got to be careful with the word. It'll tell you. The only person that really talks about who the heart changed from God was Solomon. It never said Noah's. And God is a merciful God. He forgives sin. And he called Noah for a purpose. You understand? But you got to understand some things, people. I'm going to go into a series that's going to make a lot of people head spin coming up. Who God called, he anointed. Touch not my anointed. You understand? But like I said, I tell people all the time, you got to realize your purpose. You got to realize the first thing you got to realize, fear no man but God. As an anointed person of an anointed man or a woman of God, you realize that you have no fear. The only person you're afraid of is the one that can cast your whole body and soul into hell. That's the only person you need to fear as a child of God. You got to see in regards to Abraham next. Abraham was one of the next people that God called according to his purpose. You see, he called Noah to keep the people going. He spared Noah to keep people going in this earth, keep people flourishing in this earth. And after he flooded the land, he set a bowl. And he said, I'll never flood the earth again. God is merciful. He said, I'll never flood the earth. Again. I'll never destroy men with water again. So he sent this rainbow. His bow, he placed his bow in the sky. So that's why every time I see a rainbow, I just remember God's promises. God's promises have been forever of old. He promised you that he won't flood this earth again. That's one of the first promises he gave. You understand? And I hate the world that we live in, how they distort the truth, make the rainbow about something what it's totally not about. Yeah, God loves all his children. And he won't flood the earth again, but God is not a rewarder of sin. He's not a rewarder of people that blatantly disrespect him, blatantly wicked. He said evil will destroy the wicked. Look at the world we live in, people. You see, if you do good and you dwell in the land, you got to worry about nothing. Even if they destroy your body and your soul, you know you're good. But if you do evil, the wicked will destroy you. If you do wickedness, the evil will people would destroy you and you look at the world today that happens all the time you know but God said don't even worry about that just keep doing good in the land you're going to see so many times when he say I will when he tell Abraham he said I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you you understand but he, he made and uh he told Abraham to go to the promised land to, to start the motion the promised land to gather his people together to the promised land his people God this does have a differentiation between we are all God's children but we are not all God's people I hate to say that I hate to say it but it's the truth you understand it's the truth you know I'm not going to sugarcoat the word for you if you want a sugar-coated preacher or a sugar-coated teacher, I guess you go online and find one. I'm going to tell you about the love of God. I'm going to tell you about the fear of God. 
I'm going to tell you about the mercy of God. I'm going to tell you about the wrath of God. I'm going to tell you about the vengeance of God. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. You got to understand some things, people. God does not play. Only chance, he, the only thing now is he give people a chance to right their wrongs by coming directly to Jesus Christ. You understand? You got an advocate. Jesus died for your sins. You, you got a direct contact to Jesus Christ. So you got a direct contact to Jesus Christ. You got a direct contact to God. It's up to you to call on him. It's not up to your brother, your sister, your dad, or anybody else to save you. He said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Just like it was up to Noah. Yes, he saved his father, his sons, but he saved his sons for a purpose. But in reality, God saved them. Because God worked through Noah. And God chose Noah and his sons and his wife. Do you understand, people? Know your Bible. Know it. Do you understand? But I just really want to dwell on honor your mother and your father today. You understand? He said, Be, bring not a railing accusation against my anointed. Wow, there's so many things in the world. You know, you just don't understand. God's purpose is so deeper than people can realize. And you know, the people live in this world and, okay, you'll read the Bible. No drunkard will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Was Noah a drunkard? Or he just got drunk one time? You see, you got to understand the word, people. Was he a drunkard? Or was he just made merry one time and he had over and those one time? It was his personal sin. You understand? You have to look at things from a whole nother perspective. The Bible says, be careful how you judge. As you can see, Ham, or was it whatever son disrespected Noah, his judgment was not righteous judgment on the matter. You can see a lot of things in the Bible. If you open your eyes up. One thing I done learned. God doesn't want me to beat people down. Or in regards to what they do. You know why you treat everybody with respect. Let me tell you something. <laughs> you know why you treat everybody with respect. Because you don't know who's anointed by God. It might not be me anointed right now. Or actually they are anointed right now. Because if they call. They already call. They just ain't stepped into their purpose yet. You understand. Because So you really don't know who God has called. For you to place judgment on another person, you don't know if you may be placing judgment on one of God's chosen and bringing on yourself swift destruction. Swift destruction. You understand? I'm going to tell you so many stories of, in regards to David, Samson, so many other people in the Bible that God's anointed. Paul. So many people in the Bible that God has anointed. Peter. So many people in the Bible that God has called and chosen. Samuel. Eli. I'm going to tell you, sometimes when people lost their anointing, when God stripped it from their hand and the cast of their children, Eli, Samuel replaced somebody. If you read the Bible, you'll understand that Samuel was a replacement. And guess what? His replacement, I mean, I think Samuel replaced Eli. And Eli trained Samuel. Wow, his replacement. It seems like that happens a lot. David replaced Saul, but David also sung great music to Saul to soothe the evil spirit that God has sent upon him. Sometimes you see your replacement right beforehand. It's not always going to be a bad way. John the Baptist was replaced by Jesus Christ, but he was replaced in a good way. He stayed to this service that he never lost his anointing. His time was just up. You understand? You have to read your Bible. You'll see so many different stories and great stories. That's why I, don't, I hate that TV does not dwell. And when they make movies about the Bible, they misinterpret it and they put it out there that it's not near like it should be. I hate that. There's so many great stories in the Bible. They're quick to make stories about Greek mythology. But every time they make a story about the Bible, they change it up. I watched the story of Noah. And it was so far-fetched, I thought I was watching Lord of the Rings. No, hardly no truth in there. Try to make Noah look like he was just a crazy man. Like if people who decide to listen to God's voice just crazy. 
or paranoid, schizophrenic, or whatever. Even uh, Moses' story that Hollywood recreated was horrible. I was talking about the new one. It's crazy how they distort the word of God. Stay true to the word. You understand? Stay true to the word. They changed it up. And the story of Noah, um, when Noah built the ark, somebody snuck in. It caused all kind of confusion in there. Snuck in to the ark with Noah. Well, my Bible never said anybody snuck in with the ark into the ark with Noah, so I know that's a straight lie. You got to be careful. You got to read the Bible for yourself, people. No lie is of God. I don't care. If, oh, it's just entertainment. God said, you should not add to his word or take away from it. Making a movie and distorting the word of God is the same as taking away from it and the same as adding to it. You know. But just be careful out there, people. That's why Jesus summed up the, the commandments and everything with a simple phrase. Love everybody. Love will cover a multitude of sins. You see, if you love everybody, you won't fall into the snare of misjudging the wrong person. You hear me? Or hating someone that God loves. And God is called. But if you hate your enemies, your enemy may turn his life around. And have been called by God and you disrespecting that person. I hate to tell people things like this, but it's the truth. Touch not my anointed. Because God has called them for a purpose. David knew this. David would not touch Saul. Even after Saul lost favor with God. He would not touch him. God would not let him. You see, when you're called by God, he won't let you do dumb, th dumb things. You understand? It was already in David's heart not to touch his anointed. Wow. It was already in David's heart. Hey, I ain't for to touch Saul. Oh, no. <laughs> if God chose to take his candlestick and put it out, I'm going to let God do what he do. He had all, God already told Saul what was going to happen to him. You and your son are going to die by the sword. Simple. Simple instructions for disobeying him. Misrepresenting him. You see, I'm going to tell you a few things. You can lose your anointing. Even in the New Testament, it says, when the, the many false Christs and false prophets come into the world, he's like, they would even deceive some of the elect. So you're going to see some of the elect fall away from God. I'm going to go back a little bit. Years ago, when I first gave my life to God, God gave me a vision and dream. And in the vision, I was called to fight in the army with God. And I was called to fight against the forces of darkness. I remember fighting and we was going into hell. And we was fighting against spiritual wickedness and demons. It was God's army versus the evil army. And when I was fighting, and God's army, a lot of people changed sides. This was a dream I had, probably about 2010, 2011. They changed sides. But in the dream, I remained on God's side. But I saw so many people change from their anointing, calling of God. They changed sides. They went backwards. They went back to the evil one. You remember the Matrix? And Neo uh, had his eyes open to the truth. But there's one guy that had his eyes open to the truth, but he wanted to go back. He wanted to go back to living a lie. And when he went back to living that lie, he died in that lie. He wanted to go back. It happens. Movies tell you truth in plain sight. You see, as a Christian, you're going to learn to see God in everything. But his eyes were open to the light. But he wanted to go back to living fiction. Oh, the, I know this steak ain't real, but it tastes so real. I want to go back. Put me back in the matrix. If God frees you from the matrix, 
which is this evil world we live in, stay free. It's up to you to stay free. So I'm going to tell you a lot of things. People always say who the good son says free is free indeed. It's up to you by working out your own salvation with fear and trembling to remain free. Do you understand? Have a blessed day. May the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you throughout this day and guide your footsteps. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.